On today's episode, mailbag questions and second year NFL players. Hey, make sure you subscribe to this channel and enjoy the video. Goodbye. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, February 23rd, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. The countdown begins. Oh, or for me. For you. I mean, sorry, I've been counting. I know, but not publicly. Yeah, no. Jason has to be really, really yeah, excited so Jay, if you knew like, what I was talking about. Jason, oh, yeah. No, I'm there. Jason has the countdown because his countdown is he's no long, he will no longer be the only person eligible for ARP. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm going to have a best friend here soon. Yes. And uh, then we will look down upon you. Yeah. Youngin, so Mike is <laughs> get uh, off our lawn. And I've got a while. I've got a while. Mike is back from Mexico. You yes. had a good time with Scoot your family? Back a, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you want to talk about being old man. I was the old man on this trip. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I I had uh, uh, <laughs> ne ne neck pain. Oh, oh, yeah. I had a massive diverticulitis flare up. Ooh. <laughs> uh, my, Fun. my Both of my feet had matching burn, burn, rubber burns from my, from my uh, flippy flops. Boston. What? I was just... Is it, so it's all physical. Oh, You're just I, yes. falling apart. Oh, yes. I was as old as it could On be. On the precipice yes. of your... Of my birthday, yes. Of your 40th birthday. So my wife was reminding me. She's like, you are... You're turning 40 and you're falling apart. Man. And wow. there, I could not give a rebuttal because it was ridiculous. And I was... I mean, I was with you... You're kind of the youngest in spirit in many ways. Sure. Uh, of the three of us. I am the youngest in age. <laughs> <laughs> Not the youngest in spirit. Mm -mm. But I mean, we went to, we had the Super Bowl festivities. And we yep. ended up, you know, we were with a group from this Spotify. Dinner, dinner, yeah. This dinner, that dinner, this Drake concert at yeah. a club late at night, which it's normal at 38 to start your clubbing life, right? Isn't that the... Yep. Okay. But like, you know, we felt... We felt pretty old. Yes, we did. Well, and you two did. Yes. I, yeah. I stayed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Well, this is not a podcast about the worst parts <laughs> of being an adult. Uh, that would be the spitballers. Welcome into the show. We've got some stuff to talk about. Glad to have Mike back. Deucer's Alley is, uh, well, it's full. It's deucing. It's full. Uh, we've, we had the Brooks birthday a couple days ago, too. So birthdays happening around here. Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us over there. The community is jointhefoot.com if you want an extra episode of the show every week. And um, don't forget the uh, 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit. You only have a few days left if you want to get in. March 1st is the deadline to get the Ultimate Draft Kit before the contest is over. You get a chance to be in the Listener League with us next year to play with us. If you, if you think you're going to get the Ultimate Draft Kit, which you do, just do it now in the next few days. You do think that. Yeah, you do think that it is so good. Um, and also, a lot of it is available now if you do any dynasties, dynasty rankings, startup rankings, uh, all sorts of stuff is in the UDK Plus. So grab it in the next few days. Probably better to do it right now. But you've got till March 1st to be eligible to uh, play with the ballers in the yep. Listener League. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great stuff up there right now for the Dynasty Pass. That's ultimatedraftkit.com. Quick question of the day as we kick things off. Which second-year player do you see uh, ready to make a big jump in fantasy football? So we had our rookie review show, I think, two episodes ago. Went over players that actually made their contributions in the rookie season. There are some players that are, have obviously bright futures, some that really disappointed that you almost didn't even hear their names mentioned throughout the year. Uh, David Bell's one of those guys. And so who do you think has the opportunity to make a jump from their rookie season as you go look at the 2023 landscape. Well, I can I can jump in here with uh, kind of spoiling some of our news section as well. 
Robert Woods has been released from the Tennessee Titans. They are left with a total of Traylon Burks at wide receiver. That is basically Westbrook Kikine is still uh, there. They, yeah, and, and, he's, he's and they got free agent. Conquo and Kikine is a free agent. He's a free agent. Um, uh, it was okay. most. It was go, mostly a joke. Let's go, he, Chig. Uh, oh man, yeah, Conquo. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay. Traylon will not be literally the only wide receiver right. they have, but he is their basket of talent and i believe he is a very talented wide receiver <laughs> Never heard that expression in my life well, i you, like it and you will not hear it again <laughs> so uh, you say what well, you were just trying it out and you didn't like it no much? i actually loved it but i want to keep it special i thought that was its moment so like but a one-time use level of special yeah i mean that so we're gonna like, nft that moment <laughs> and uh it's gonna be worth <laughs> quite a one one so do you you don't worry about Traylon getting a uh high draft capital addition in the draft or anything uh, well they're certainly going to bring someone else in whether that is in the draft or try to their to basket try, of talent try watch it um <laughs> you know try to trade for someone or on the free agent marketplace i don't believe that they're in a great position to they, they desperately agree with you on they that. desperately need to bring in more wide receiver help but they've got quite a few holes to fill they don't have a ton of extra draft capital this isn't a great free agent class and the wide receivers in this year's rookie class I think there are some good ones but it's not the best class of all time there's not you know a bunch of people that scare me Traylon Burks when he was on the field and playing more than 50 percent of snaps which didn't happen as much as we wanted because of injuries last season he was really good he sh he showed me enough flashes to believe in him going forward I don't think they're going to be able to get out of Ryan Tannehill's contract and I believe Ryan Tannehill's a fine quarterback to get Traylon the ball so next year he's he should take a step up okay yeah it makes sense I mean very talented just needs to stay on the field ironically that was you know, Robert Woods' time there was marred by injury as well and just inconsistent usage. He was not the same guy. He had been coming off an injury. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw out the name Isaiah Pacheco, and I know that they, I'm going to throw an if, an if in front of it. But I think that there's an opportunity there for Pacheco. I We know that the Clyde experiment, uh, while he may be part of the rotation in the future because they do that, like his his potential to take over this backfield is gone. That window's closed. Clyde's not going to be the guy, in my opinion. And Pacheco only involved himself more and more throughout the back half of the year. If he is their primary runner, you saw a little bit of what they wanted to do with him, even with an effective Jarek McKinnon. The back half of the year, this was a, a running back on, on pace for over 230 carries, over 1,100 rushing yards, eight and a half touchdowns. And he looks the part to me. I mean, this is a very... Young, swift, yeah, f fleet of foot. I mean, he runs hard, and I think that, you know, we, we have lived in the time period where Andy Reid had a Kareem Hunt. He had somebody he could lean on, and look, they're coming off a Super Bowl victory where Pacheco played a huge part. So I, I'm going to bring him up because I think he is – he far surpassed draft value in the NFL level and the fantasy value. Um I think he's that guy. I think he's got the it factor. He he certainly has the speed, and I think he's a talented runner. The team loves him. Uh, you you watch kind of the Super Bowl celebrations, and he, he's a big part of their plan moving forward. I'm not in love with his value in the sense that during the second ha half of the year, weeks 9 through 18, in those 10 games that he played, he was excellent. It, it was decent for fantasy football and really good as a runner, but he wasn't used in the receiving game. He would have been on pace for – 20 targets, 18. Because oh, that, that was Jerick McKinnon. But exactly. McKinnon's probably gone. So the the question here is whether or not he's ever going to be allowed the receiving role. If he re receives it, hey, oh, 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 man. Um, then, yeah, fantasy value will be there. I am skeptical that he'll step into the receiving back role. Yeah, that'll be something to watch. I mean, Jerick McKinnon, I think, would love to come back to Kansas City. Sure. It's just whether that is a financial – situation they can work out mike i see a familiar name next yes. to your name i'm gonna go with drake london i am very excited for his future i mean it, it started off pretty rough weeks one through 12 36 yards per game but then closed the season pretty hot the final five games he was looking at about 85 yards per game and i think all of those uh except for one so four of the five were desmond ritter which we we don't yet know what it, what Atlanta is going to do, and like people's 
you know, argument against Drake London could be, well, Desmond Ritter is set up to be the quarterback right now. They're talking him up. Yeah, he he actually showed up. Drake London was able to produce once Desmond Ritter was on the field. There's not a huge pie to go around, but Drake London was was gobbling up just like a an incredible amount of market share. Uh, we're talking like, oh my goodness gracious, twenty nine percent or something, thirty six percent over he the had, back half. Yeah, over those five games, he was looking at a thirty six percent target share. But he is a, a, I believe, a tremendous player. And Marcus Mariota is out of the way. So to me, it's either it's Desmond Ritter or better for Drake London, which gives me some hope and excitement that will be will be a bit more consistent. If you could, if you had to make the decision today, Mike, in a keeper league, okay, and you're keeping Drake London on your roster going okay. into next year, or you're keeping Cortland Sutton on your roster going into next oh year, oh my gosh, who are you selecting in that situation? Oh, and yes, I'm smirking. Wow. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's a I, confidence test. I think maybe in both directions. No, it it certainly is. I mean, you so Cortland Sutton is it's Sean Payton. Like, how can Sean Payton turn that version of Russell Wilson back into an NFL quarterback? I will probably take the upside of Drake London right there. It, yeah, and, that's and where I go. Just to chime in, it's an easy Drake London for me. <laughs> I don't think it's easy. I said for me, and it was I very know. easy. Uh, I am always going to err on the side of young, up-and-coming, hyper-athletic guy versus someone about to near the age cap at their position who hasn't been performing well. Corlin Sutton disappointed this past year is getting a little older. I'm going to definitely Every, go upside. Everybody disappointed. Yeah, everybody's getting older, especially mine. Yeah, everybody yeah. is. is even a... Drake London is getting older. I will say this. I'm going to throw a little uh, hope bomb out there Ooh, that may be the next that's a, that's may, a fun bomb yeah maybe a, the next generation of being potentially enthusiastic at the tight end position is on the precipice because i think that you have three very talented so first you've never really had the kyle pitts uh consistency right so kyle pitts still exists out there as a potential upside right he's 22 you have three talented tight ends from last year that i think should see their roles improve Chiga Conquo in the back half of the year was great. Rookies don't really do it. He did it for a few games, and he's going to have that same opportunity he talked about with Burks. Trey McBride over the last few games showed what he was drafted for. Greg Dulcich flashed at times, and you, you talk about Sean Payton. And then you've got a couple of pretty good rookie tight ends coming into the draft this year uh, with, uh, was it uh, Dalton, King, Kincaid, Kincaid and, and Myers. Myers? Yeah. So. I'm just saying there could be like six names that are not in your ordinary yeah. discussion. That's I mean, all I got. Hopefully. So, well, it's, it's, mayor, well, right? you, it's a hope bomb. It's not a truth yeah. bomb. It's, <laughs> it's, we're going to hope that Titans finally do something. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's just a chance is what I'm saying. So yeah, the, I, I had been, I'm trying to look at, uh, like studying tight ends. Even of, Cole Komet. Cole Komet could, yeah, could take uh, a more consistent yes, step forward. I do like Cole Komet next year. I mean, We'll see what if Justin Fields is actually their quarterback or not. But looking, trying to find, I, I've mentioned this, tr just trying to find s some indicator for uh, tight ends that we may have missed. Which, I mean, people, <laughs> this is an a, this is a study that is that has existed since time began. Trying to figure out how do you get a breakout tight end, and I mean the so far the truth that I can at least gleam is they do it pretty rapidly like you you know kind of right at the beginning of their career if they are going to turn into something or not it's pretty it's it's not nearly as common to have the guys that take like the 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 Greg Olson path where I mean he was a high draft capital guy but it took a few years and a new team for him to go get going while the other guys you kind of you saw it in a in a certain points per game threshold right away yeah that I'm really a fan of what I saw of Chiga Conquo and the athleticism because he he did he put up numbers that would have been good over the course of his season on like sub fifty percent of snaps. So he seems like somebody like you know we were talking about Andrews a couple of years ago. Oh, what if he played more snaps? Right. Right. Um, but we'll see. I mean, there are some names out there that are going to be talented. We talked about it in the Truth episodes. The involvement of the tight end position. Um, I think it could be fun to watch. I'm going to choose to jump oh, upon the hope bomb. I, I love and let it explode on 
Yeah, sure. On me. I, <laughs> I, uh, I love playing the game, the tight end game, but it just it it doesn't often work out. Every once in a while, it's a you, different kind like, of ex- yeah. Look, you get every once in a while, you get Jordan Reed, you get Darren Waller, you get George Kittle. Like it happens. Russian so, roulette is thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> it is a real thrilling right. game when you come out the other There's side. There's no better feeling, though. Correct. Than, than hitting yes. on the the lowly drafted superstar tight end. It feels like you cheat coded your season. Yeah. But yeah. Kelsey in the first, anyone? Yeah, oh, for sure. All right. Let's hop into. Uh, we got some news? We do. News and notes from around the league. Uh, well, we got some surgery news, and then we Jason mentioned it. Robert Woods was released. Taylor Lewan released. They are, they are making some moves. Robert Woods tweeted, "Where should I go?" And then Cooper Cup raised his hand. <laughs> so oh, a return to. I mean, it makes sense. It does. Brock Purdy was supposed to be having surgery this past Wednesday, but delayed due to inflammation and swelling. They're going to reconvene in early March. Obviously, the recovery is dependent on the surgery taking place. Um, you know, this happens, right? This is why Kyler didn't get surgery immediately. You know, generally, you need swelling to go down, but the fact that it was expected to happen didn't happen. It's going to delay some of the recovery. Get this man some ibuprofen. <laughs> that's Th- that's all he needs. <laughs> man, look, why didn't they think of that? I'm I'm not saying they haven't thought of it, but I'm just throwing it out there. Just may, the doctors may have overlooked. Mm. The ibuprofen. Maybe four pills. You yeah. Know, take it take it to the Extra limit. strength. I can see Mike walking in, giving that advice, <laughs> turning around, walking back. Uh, my, my job here is done. I just toss the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> take it from me. I'm 40. <laughs> he might do an Aikido roll out of the room. Just in, I'm out of here. And McCall Hardman, he kept trying to play football over the back half of the year, and it just didn't come to fruition. Yeah. Underwent surgery for a core muscle injury, eight-week timeline uh, to get back. And uh, resume his normal role of making it more confusing to know which chief wide receiver you might be able to play. Well, he's that's the only role he plays. I don't Hardman. know if he's under contract. Yeah, Hardman's a free agent. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he'll just do that for another now, team. Yeah. Now is the time. Now is the time to remember who's getting yeah. new contract or not. Okay, fine. I I wonder where. Uh, I mean, have we seen enough of McCall Hardman N- to make a decision uh, I, one way I or the have. other? You've seen enough. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to be a uh, a guy. I think they're going to hope that Sky Moore can Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony can fill the small void left by Hardman. Uh, they they'll draft someone. Well, Juju will be gone too. That'll be the really interesting question: is whether they re-sign him or let him move on in free agency. Is that it? We got any news, Brooksy? Anything else? Nothing else. Al, how are we doing today? Doing well. Yeah. Yes, yeah, having, having a nice day. All black again, I see. That's weird, right? Yeah. I <laughs> thought so, I'd switch it up today. <laughs> such a different look. No, um, got back from the cruise, and you just kept the same spirit. It's what fits. <laughs> <laughs> I have a self-correction. I said Myers oh. for the uh, uh-huh. yeah. rookie tight end. It's, it's Mayer. Yeah. It's because it's Michael Mayer. Oh. It should be Michael Myers, of course. Of course. So it's For like, your convenience. It's not my fault. So it's Michael Myers plus John Mayer. Right. And we have, now we have... Uh, Something really scary. <laughs> <laughs> he slowly plays love ballads like yeah. as he walks up to you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. I was looking for a body is a wonderland joke. Ooh. But I'm going to just... Body s- was a wonderland. Body <laughs> parts are a wonderland. <laughs> Welcome to the off-season edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Uh, let's take a break, get into the mailbag. We got to get Al some bright-colored clothing that fits him. You we, know? Ju- we just need to have a, a company uniform, <laughs> you know, that, that okay. we, we require okay. during production of our show for can, him to wear can it be like it uh, could be anything we want like a hot dog uniform oh i was gonna go like a uh like a, when you when a kid dresses up as a sailor yeah. oh that's a good one too we can Ahoy! really have uh, producers like a uniform for each day of the week and that whatever. does seem like us yeah yeah it's right. almost like he's losing the wheel of shame except I'm looking into it it's just his job it's called the week of shame and it's every week working for us mike you ready for a mailbag drop <clears throat> yep 
<laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, yeah. still, you better not lose that when you, oh, uh, you celebrate this birthday. I mean, w- once the clock what? ticks over, I mean, it's, uh, it's my, all... my voice could become a pumpkin. Ibuprofen is what I recommend. <laughs> That's what I recommend. I've heard good things. <laughs> If you got a question for the show, we're here to answer them, and uh, we'll have some mailbag episodes throughout the off season. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. No voicemails today, Brooksy. No sir. Mm, okay, nothing that uh, was up to snuff, huh? Uh, the quality on a couple people are oh. dri- people driving, and uh, it's not going to go well on the podcast. He doesn't take uh, your voicemail unless it's on a SM7B. Yeah. 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 So. He doesn't take no guff. And preferably, like John Mayer, play some, you know, play a little guitar in the background. All right. Instagram question from Brandon Ismarin. Who do you want to see at Saints as the Saints cor- quarterback? Uh, I would like, to, I'll go with Derek Carr. I'd be super happy about that. Is I mean, that just kind of the default answer for all the open jobs right well, now? Because it's a. Derek Carr, I think, is more willing to go down the field than Jimmy Garoppolo. So we need someone who can get it done for for our dear, sweet, sweet Chris Olave. Like we need targets down the field, or 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 Jameis. They just let Jameis Winston have his job back because that was working out just fine for the rest of us. I don't care about your Saints. That's not wins been discussed losses. either. Yeah, it would like I don't understand. And he doesn't even care. That's Jameis's personality. He he's like. Yeah, man, talk to whoever you want. I'll be here. I feel like Jameis should either go back to the Saints or even back to the Buccaneers. You know, it's like, oh, Brady's gone. Oh. You're allowed oh. back. We didn't want to replace you, but it was the GOAT. And right. I think Jameis would get it. I would get it. It'd be like, yeah, that's Tom Brady. He's, he's still under contract by the Saints. Is he? Yes. I, I did not realize he was when, still under contract. So he, he should he should by default be the starter right the now. The weirdest part to me of Jameis starting the season and – I mean, it was a few games in, and they, like I don't remember what week he had the the back problem. It was very quick, very and, early yeah. uh, for the season, but he it seemed like he was playing better, making you know more conservative decisions, not turning the ball over as much, and just playing decent and enough that we let's see what happened. But remember, they they gave him like the contract before the year started that looked like he was easily going to be the starter for not just this year. Or, or for last year, but at least through this year, and then they, they're like, "What well, man, Andy Dalton? He's we can't get him off the field. Yeah, he's burning it up." I think the game logs tell a slightly different story. Okay, what hit me? Okay, so week one comes out, wins the game, zero turnovers, two touchdowns, playing well. Okay, let's okay. Week two was week two the back. He he played week two and week three, hundred percent of snaps. Okay, so he got he got through them and then was out the rest of the way. Uh, three interceptions in week two in a loss. Two interce- He got five okay. interceptions in those two games. Yeah, I'm was- just remembering week one. Though. Yeah, week one he was good. Jameis Winston it was played in week two and three. Derek Carr did come out and say he's going to take his time in free agency, and it does seem like there are a lot of potential destinations for Derek Carr, including teams that haven't been brought up as much, like Carolina with Frank Reich. Sure. Could be a home for uh, Derek Carr. Obviously the Jets. Uh, the Saints, there are going to be opportunities for him, and he said he wants to do his due diligence. I think Carolina's where he's going to land, but if I'm a franchise... I think they win the division with him. Sure. I mean, it's a very easy division to win. If I'm a franchise, like I know obviously the Jets, they want to go after Aaron Rodgers. They also want Derek Carr. They just want to replace... They've got such a good defense. They've got great weapons on offense. They need a quarterback who can come in here and do enough. And I think the quarterback they should go after wholeheartedly is Jimmy Garoppolo. Because Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to cost what Derek Carr costs. He's not going to cost both financially and capital what Aaron Rodgers costs. You have a great team. Jimmy Garoppolo, we already know, can play on a great team around him and get to the Super Bowl. So, uh, to me, if I'm a Jets fan, that's the guy that I'm wanting. Someone that is fully capable and doesn't break the bank. But for fantasy, what do you want? Oh, gosh, not Jimmy Garoppolo. That would be (laughs) ridiculous. We all want Jameis Winston. We want Jameis Winston. <laughs> I want those picks, baby. Keep slinging it. Um, it'd be great if all the Tampa wide receivers just brought them back. They didn't care about – the picks didn't matter to them. They cared about the yeah. 5,000 passing yards. So did you hear the 30-plus touchdown parts? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
Um, all right, here is a question from Twitter. Michael Campbell, I want to get my redraft buds to start a dynasty league with me. How do I get them interested? Ooh. So far, I've mentioned it and haven't gotten many positive responses. Got some suggestions for you, Michael. One of them is, uh, look, if your buddies, if you can't convince them, you can go hop on our Discord community and we have a Foot Clan Leagues section where you can find people for your uh, for your leagues. Yeah, that it's, it's hard to convince, assuming your league is 12, it's hard to convince 11 people to, to make that transition and for the first time. Yeah, you don't want to convince people. You want to ask them and have enthusiasm because a dead Dynasty League manager is the worst thing you can have. 100%. You've got to have commitment here. So if you've got three or four guys that want to do it and the rest of the league doesn't, that's a good core. Go over to Foot Clan Leagues and see if you can uh, you know, grab more more people to uh, fill out your your league. And, and if you can only find 10 total teams, do a 10-team league instead of finding two people who, you know, they just go, okay, I'll – I'll take a team, but they're not going to be active. They're not going to participate. You're going to have two leagues, two teams that just stink up the league. The truth is Dynasty is super fun. Uh, it keeps you active all year long, and uh, we love it. I mean, it's a great format. Uh, brings people together at different times of the year, rookie drafts, all that stuff. So it's, and, a, it's a super engaging – like, you can give them this clip. Like, it's an engaging, fun form of fantasy football. It's more of – you feel more like an actual general manager of your team where because it's you you know usually like about 30 players on your roster that's who you you can have that person forever you can if you get a quarterback at the at your startup draft you can have that player on your team forever until they retire like that so i think that that's the part that is that is appealing and more it's not appealing for everybody but it's just it's it's a deeper management experience where you're you're more concerned about uh you know like your pick equity of well, what, what are these rookie picks worth and and you know though that type of trading i mean there, there's an element of it where and i'm just comparing it to like playing basketball you a, a pickup game is like your redraft you show up sure you play your game you win or lose it you go home you know, the dynasty is like playing in a league mm -hmm. where you are building a history. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, you said you just made a dynasty trade last week. Yeah, I got George Pickens, and he wasn't even on my radar, but it's just such a good feeling in the offseason, too. Well, I, well, now we need to know what the trade was. Yep, well, he, for sure. he made it oh, right he's... after our show, too, when we were talking about Pickens. Okay. I gave up Brandon Ayuk straight up for Pickens. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fi I'm fine with that. But uh, speaking, wonder of if you're going to be right or wrong. That part <laughs> of of dynasty of making trades right now. Another thing you can say to convince people to convert over, and it, you don't need to convert the league. Add the league. Start a, an additional league that's a dynasty league, and it's not too much work because they re dynasty leagues and redraft leagues yin and yang together to make a perfect fantasy circle. You're off season when you're bored and you wish there was more football going on and something to do and something to care about. There is in Dynasty. You can make trades and, and waiver wire pickups in the offseason and care about rookies and do rookie drafts when, when fantasy isn't at its peak. And then when you're in season and you're like, you know, you've got a lot of management to do, you've got waivers or, you know, to, to go through, you don't have that much work to do in a Dynasty League. It's really mostly setting your roster. And then there might be like a waiver wire pickup per week that you might look at in those leagues. I am potentially going to be depressed with your answer to this next question. Okay. Okay. I hope to let you down. Warren uh, wants to know Mike Evans or a second round rookie pick in a dynasty league. Mm. Oh, that's easily Mike Evans. Easily Mike Evans. Whew. Easily. I a thought second. I thought I was maybe living some fantasy life here thinking no. Mike Evans is still a commodity in a dynasty league. Mike, well, my Mike Evans is still a very good player for, for dynasty leagues. I mean, he got uh, Think in the dynasty window of three-ish years. I mean, Mike Evans will still be relevant in three years, I believe. And he he's not worth a, a top half of a first-round pick uh, of, of the first round, but a second-rounder. So 105 those, you would trade Mike Evans yes. for? I, I, yeah, I'd rather, I think I'd rather have the 105. I would rather have one of those early picks to grab a rookie chance over Mike Evans because he's 29 and a half years old. But I, I agree, he's got at least two good years. And I do 
believe that there is a chance that either Chris Goblin or Mike Evans gets moved. Uh, sure. The, if if you're another franchise, and there's plenty of other franchises out there that really needs help at wide receiver, you're going to go to the Buccaneers and kick the tires and say, look, your window isn't right this second. You know, Mike Evans isn't going to help you win. Grab something for your team's future. Let us take him and give him a new contract and all that. So his situation, his quarterback situation, you've got to do some projecting. Like, you know, I'm in some of these way too early best ball leagues and you go, well, the quarterback situation is going to suck for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Probably, but I, I, if if either one of them leaves, then both of their situations probably get far better. Yeah, he'll be an interesting uh, situation to watch. Both of those guys will be interesting to watch in 2023 with their situation. Evans seems like he's he, he's essentially on the last year of his deal this year. Mm -hmm. hmm. Get something for him. At least he's the kind of player that can go somewhere even at 30-31, and maybe score 12 times. Yes. like Brandon Marshall. Yeah, exactly. You can go someplace and be a big target and score a bunch. He clearly still has the ability to get uh, downfield. Oh, yeah, yeah week 17, does. baby! <laughs> Mike Evans, my hero! Why is this question in here, Brooks? See, we've got something from uh, the loser, Brian Ketron. Oh. <laughs> Why isn't Brian Ketron featured on the show more? Because because he's a loser. Yeah, what a loser! But this is a big shout out for that loser. Yeah, uh, Brian. Ketcher. I mean, he's featured in a way because we have a bunch of kind of like, you know, show drops on YouTube that he does, and some of them are okay. Yeah, did, yeah. Like YouTube, did you like the the guy in the wig? Yeah, like the wig, That's Brian. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, shout out to Catcher in, in reality after this past season. Why, why are we doing? I don't know. No. Someone put. I feel like he got access to our show doc. Looks like he pays for Twitter and, Blue and put this uh, in. Oh, put him on blast. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Brooks. He put it there to body him. Yeah. That's he lives for that. Uh, all right, Instagram. Uh, we have Co Coach Cole Smith wants to know uh, who has a better fantasy season this year, Jonathan Taylor or Najee Harris. I believe uh, oh, both have a better season than they had last year. Najee had a good season last year. This is not an anti-Najee take, but Jonathan Taylor should get back to form. Now, is he going to be the number one overall running back? Obviously, he has that ability, that talent. There, his, his situation is not perfect, but his talent is completely elite. If people are doubting him, based on the Colts kind of going downhill and him being injured this last year, he's someone that I would be kicking the tires on to see if you can acquire. You know, it's it's one of those players where usually when you've got a superstar young, you know, the first draft pick and he's a running back, that is not acquirable. And so you can't trade enough for him. And now you might be able to find a manager in certain leagues that is worried. And I am not worried about Jonathan Taylor. His – his athleticism, his, you know, the prospect that he is and what he already showed on the NFL field, he got injured. Like, I'm not worried. Yeah, and that um, you almost get in the same situation where the doubt around Christian McCaffrey last year. It's like the most injured, the most recently injured superstar that hurt you the most is very difficult to not have some people come out and say, well, is it over? Because that's just human nature, I think. All right. Um, Matthew in Tuscaloosa, appreciate the Dynasty Pass already being up and helping me out. How high do Stroud and Young, be C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, both quarterback prospects that should go? Uh, top five? Yeah, top At least one two of them probably, will. but um, if some trades happen. How high do they uh, move up in super flex rookie drafts, and where would they slot in compared to like Bijan Robinson? They will probably be the 102 and 103 in all rookie drafts um, in super flex leagues. Every super flex league that I've seen ADP for pretty much still has Bijan as the 101. And then in some order, it's really depending on – because the NFL draft hasn't happened, it, it's depending upon where you think Stroud would go or where you think Young would land – as to which one you prefer, but those two guys are usually the next two picks after Bijan and Superflex. All right, Twitter question from Nick. Is it safe to assume Javante Williams would be the 
Camaro role for Sean Payton, or is he actually closer to the Mark Ingram? I, I, I'm not sure it's healthy to break Javante Williams up into role A or role B, I would say, because his his physical skill set is not Alvin Kamara's. He can catch the football, but Kamara was like next level at catching the football. So um, do I think Javante will be the majority back that has the most opportunity to succeed? Yes. Yeah, if you look at Sean Payton, he uses the skills of his talents. That's part of that is part of why he's a great offensive coach. He doesn't have a Camara role. He had a role for Alvin Camara. If it's Deuce McAllister, he uses him like that. Chris Ivory was a banger. He used Chris Ivory. Right. You know, he's going to take the talents that Javante has and get the most out of him. Yeah, and he has a long history of that with Pierre Thomas and Reggie Bush. <laughs> there's Re Reggie Bush and yeah, there's no limit to the running backs are going to succeed. It's just in the in the way that is best for them, and, and Chase I, Edmonds will be there next year, right? I, he's under man. contract. They oh. can cut him, which is probably the likely scenario. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't. I think they'll get the most out of yeah. Chase Edmonds by, uh, by cutting. Him. <laughs> they can cut him for zero dollar dead cap. Yeah. So so see you later. So he's wow. just, he's just done, huh? Yeah. He's and, but wow, he is gonna re he is gonna resign. There are a lot of new leagues. Um, the XFL, the USFL. Oh, stop. So Come on. I, stop. I don't think his football playing oh. days are over. Oh, man. <laughs> there are different ways to deal with Burns, man. There are different <laughs> yes, ways. Yes, there are. And one of them is hatred. <laughs> one uh. of them is a real dark place in your heart. <laughs> Here, here's the one thing about Javante Williams is that, <laughs> is that they're going to need – I, I, I would expect I, this I team. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. You forgot until now? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What'd you forget? Dead, dead to me. Uh, Jason was very bullish. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, as an eighth-round pick, I thought he was a good value. Uh, as wrong, did I. Wrong O. Uh, I want to bring as up. As did the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> yes. to be fair. But he was not a good value. The Javante Williams injury situation is going to define the way that the Broncos, you know, pursue depth at running back. Because this was an ACL, LCL, um, and more. And plus. Oh, gosh. Uh, so, you know, he's likely going to start camp on the PUP. We're going to need to follow it closely. And then when he's back, it's how much do you give him, right? That's going to be a part of it. Like, if you want to make the – Jason has talked about how he's bullish about Brees Hall. Mm -hmm. But part of that story is is I think I think you've said it and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't want to speak for you but the the way you looked at him last year where you said okay the back half of the year is going to be better it seems like that's the tone you've taken this year where it's like okay he'll be back out there but you're going to improve because you're coming off the injury you're going to get stronger you're going to get more opportunity in the second half yeah I, I would agree with that I you know he'll be better in year two than he is in year one but I do think he'll be successful in year one. And so so Williams is a player that they're going to need to have complementary pieces around him. Might not be Chase Edmonds or Latavius Murray, but you might have wished it was as a fantasy player, depending on who they bring in there. Because there will be some players out there that, that could come and contribute, and we know that Sean Payton has used multiple backs. So I, I feel like the Javante Williams dynasty story is scarier to me than the Brees Hall dynasty story, story for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. Even though Javante's what, 22? Is he 22 years old? That's I don't think he's very old. Javante Williams. I could be wrong. I don't have his age. Oh, 22.8. I see 22. Yeah, he's 22. So, uh, and how old is Brees? 21? He should be 22. He played 21 so, in his rookie season. So, I mean, when you look at him, both coming off injury, both super talented, both have flashed at the NFL level, both have been seriously injured. So, but I I would rather be on the Brees side. Yeah, he's twenty one point seven. Point seven. Very specific. All right, uh, Mike. What is uh, what is Rashad White's dynasty value? Instagram question from Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> so for you, that you don't have to answer. What yeah, his value I just, is. I'm, he's one of those players I hate talking about. So I was so happy to hear him say, "Mike, talk." So he's he's fascinating. Was uh, he was you know a day two pick. He should be the starting running back for this team. And, I mean, we, we were comping, you know, putting Derek Carr or Garoppolo to that team. There, I, th I think that they will be aggressive going after one of these free agent quarterbacks. And we do – we talk 
a lot about, you know, don't be fooled again by the bridge quarterback coming in and thinking that they're going to turn around fantasy value for a lot of players. But I think that Derek, Derek Carr can, like, he, he still will provide fantasy value to, to a team and he'll keep the offense moving. And I think Leonard Fournette will be gone. So his, his value, I think, is more on your team than it is in trade right now of taking the gamble and the risk that they drafted him up so high to be their future starting is, running back. Is anybody in this current studio the Rashad White manager in our Dynasty League? Brooksy? No, sir. No. Al? No, sir. See, I, he is a Dynasty buy for me, and that is on the basis of my eyeballs. Sure. I like what I saw from Rashad White. I think he is multifaceted. You have a team that probably will be more predicated on the running game than they were last year. I mean, have to be, right? Most attempts of all time. And you've got a head coach who's a defensive-minded guy. Like, the way that they're going to win games is probably not the way they were winning them with Brady. And so it does come down to, you know, watching the film. Did you like what you saw from Rashad White on film? And I did. So that would make him a dynasty buy to me. But I don't think everybody has that opinion. And it's, that's why Mike said you might risky. be able to go get him. Yes, uh, yeah, and I like if I had Rashad White right now, I'm not trying to trade him away. I I'm more on the side of I would I'd be willing to trade for him uh, because I think that that value of the market doesn't match what he could be. But again, yeah, risky. Cer certainly, the 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 upside is there if if the role becomes to run the ball more and Leonard Fournette is cut, all of a sudden Rashad White becomes very valuable, even if the team isn't great. All right, we've got um, we've got one more here. YouTube question from that guy. Oh, oh that I know guy. him. That guy six six one nine nine. Oh, that's a different one. No, I know six six one nine two. Yeah, he's a nice guy. That's the one I know. Yeah, great, great, great guy. guy. Is there a world where the fantasy footballers cover the USFL and XFL fantasy football content? Sweet, yes, fancy Moses. Kyle, but, what do you think? You no. want to take that over? I'd rather die. What, okay. what do you mean Jason says yes? Well, you'd have an opportunity to cover Chase Edmonds. It's, uh, yeah, I will next year, 2023. Um, well, he just says, is there a world where he can see us covering that? It would be um, while you're asleep in your dreams. Uh, you, <laughs> oh, could, you could dream I of uh, the greatness that is uh, mediocre football Our, uh, and us covering Twitter. it. Don't you think you're alienating the, the XFL base right now? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I, uh, I watched I watched a couple of these games. Say, yes, because Twitter was very excited. I want the I want the NFL to adopt a couple of the rules. I would agree with you, and, especially and the kickoff. Honestly, it was. What is the kickoff rule? The kickoff rule is that the the two uh, sides the the offense the returning team and the and the kicking team all of their players line up ten yards apart at about the thirty, and the ball is kicked and they can't move until the receiving player catches it. And at but that they're moment, already downfield. But they're already downfield a long way, so it actually it mitigates all the injury risk. You still have a chance at a return. Of course, if you kick from the same spot in the NFL, 80% of them are going to be touchbacks anyways. But I did like the way that that played. Did, did I, you agree? I liked that. I also liked the rule of um, the instead of onside kick, you get a fourth of 15. I like that. I yes. watched A.J. McCarron do yeah, bring, that bring, was awesome. Bring his team back. He actually looked great at the end. I only saw the end of this game where he looked fantastic, but apparently they hadn't scored for three and a half quarters. They were down 15-3, to three, came down, scored. Scored a Then three scored pointer. a three-point conversion. Yeah. Then got the fourth and 15. Uh, it, it was where, great. There was a, that rule freaks me out. The, the fourth and 15 rule freaks oh. me out because uh, for whatever reason, when I hear that rule, I go to my team has done something that can win me the game, and now there's a cheat code to get them back. And and somehow the onside kick feels like, you know, that feels like impossible. So my team yes. has won it. Now, I know it will be exciting if it really existed. I'd be like on the edge of my seat. It would be fun. It would be. I mean, I'm sure the, the numbers of picking up a fourth and 15 have to be extremely low. And it's very dangerous because you don't pick it up, obviously. Yeah. The, the, you know. Isn't that a little bit of like chicken and egg though like you don't pick up lots of fourth and 15s because you don't go for them because people don't have a lot of fourth and 15s they don't plan for it. i just wonder what that would do uh so i'm curious and your mike thoughts. as an almost 40 year old that you know old school football oh, you're never 
No. Run the ball. That's not how my grandpappy played football. <laughs> what, what do you guys think about the, the going for three? Because that changes so I wanted to ask, so where, does it, where does it stop? What? Wh how yeah, far they, back can like, you go? Can I go for a like a ten pointer? You want a four point <laughs> shot in the NBA? I mean, let, let's Every <laughs> ten yards, another That's point. A, yeah. Stop drinking, people! <laughs> Stop drinking. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, look, it's a lot of fun, but I like it to be casual and fun and not work. You're saying enjoying those other leagues? Yes. Yeah, we we do a lot of shows for the regular NFL. We would expire. We would just do. It. We would miss. You if would I see had us. Had to watch every XFL game. No, no. It's like the Avengers, no. you know, with the snap, and yeah. they just become dust. Like, that would happen to us on the show. And then what? And then what, people? And then no NFL coverage. Yeah, no NFL, XFL, or USFL. You ask too much, <laughs> that guy. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Big episodes coming up next week. We've got coaching changes. We've got the 10 Things to Remember episode. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We'll talk to you then. Don't forget ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.